to panel discussion, which I'm sure will interest all of you now because uh, the invaluable role of influencer marketing is becoming more and more relevant than ever before, right? With the production of ads on hold, most of the content being produced on social media and digital is being made by the influencers themselves. So right from their homes, thus the role of influencers has been extremely important in producing and distributing content. There are, we have some of the biggest brands here. We have uh, one of our very well-known influencer here. One more time. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope all of you are ready. Just comment in your chat box how excited you are for this next panel. And uh, yep, let me now introduce you to our panelists. Uh, first, Debu Smita Majumdar, Head of Marketing, Puma India. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be part of this panel. And I think it's something everyone is experimenting with, especially during the time of COVID. So looking forward to the discussion. Absolutely. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interaction from our audiences as well. Introducing to you our next panelist, Warun Alag, co-founder and CEO, Mama Earth. Very warm welcome to you too. Hi. Hey, glad to be here and uh, to talk about our story and how we have used uh, um, uh, people to tell the story of people to others. Absolutely. So excited to hear about it. Welcoming Kushbu Benani, Content Influencer Marketing and Brand Advocacy Head at Diageo India. Very warm welcome to you too. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, everybody. Looking forward to the discussion today. It's going to be interesting. Absolutely. Also welcoming our panelist Harish Narayanan, Chief Marketing Officer, Mintra. Very warm welcome to you too. And let's welcome the influencer of the day, Nikunj Lochia, founder B Unique. Nikunj, very warm welcome to you too. Hi, thank you. Thank you for calling me. Glad to be here. Looking forward to the discussion. And our last but not the least panelist, Juhi Singh, co lead talent management pocket aces. Very warm welcome to you too. And now let's welcome our session chair for this uh, panel discussion, Lakshmi Balasubramanian, co-founder Green Room Network. Very warm welcome to you too. Hi guys, super excited. Really looking forward to uh, being a part of this panel and all the interesting discussions. Absolutely, such a varied uh, panelist that we have here. So Lakshmi, I would leave the screen to you to take the discussion forward. Sure, awesome. Hi everyone, it's uh, really nice to be here on this panel, it's work from home and you know online meetings and now webinars. Really interesting times indeed, so um, let's kind of begin with uh, what's the hottest topic right now. Uh, being a lot of uh, ad shoots and photo shoots, you know a lot of content production so to say has come to a grinding halt with the lockdown situation. Many, many brands are coping, coping and coming up with really new innovations to kind of manage this uh, scenario. In fact, as an agency, we've done some interesting stuff where we've converted influencer videos into television ads, we've converted influencer content. You know, brands just run them as a paid partnership and run them as ads. We're in fact pushing a lot of influencer videos to use innovative ways of shooting and tell the story on edit and we're pushing the envelope in every possible way. So I'm happy to hear what, uh, how, our brands here and how all of you have used influencer marketing you know uh, as a in order to kind of compensate the shooting lack of shooting uh, problems that we have right now Deb Smitha, do you want to kind of get started sure uh, yeah i mean when it find first in fact the way it all opened up for us is the day i was supposed to do one big shoot that was the day i think a day before that the lockdown was announced and we had to cancel the shoot so it kind of happened at the at the very beginning of when we were about to uh, go out there to do a one big campaign shoot so that's when the uh, you know the conversation started internally that if that now going forward this entire season because it's a for us it's a seasonal story right so it was a spring summer starting and soon after the end of season sale you're ready to do all your launches you've planned all your shoots and you realize that's not going to happen as per the Plan. So I think the first and the foremost thing that we kind of looked at was to keep the conversation going to repurpose some of the content that we have done in the past. 
because uh, which was not not so much product focused but more narrative led so we actually went back and looked into our whole content bank and picked out content which we, which we could repurpose stitch together that was first few of the things that we attempted then it moved on to doing shoots where it was about uh, putting together a creative direction uh, giving a direction to our influencers to say this is how you can shoot this is the objective of this particular content and this is how we plan to use it and once we have shared that direction with them they were sending us uh, content that in their own houses with their own phones or friends etc and we use some of those and at this point also experimenting with you know shooting through facetime i mean that's something we've not done so if we were to like look at doing uh, getting our influences on a facetime and trying to do some shoot with our in-house talent because even for the shoots we typically depend on an external crew we get a director and a cinematographer with none of that to with us we kind of getting the internal team to find ways to do it so it's been very yeah it's, it's been quite a huge learning curve if you ask me with content and all of us been really having to pull the envelope and think of absolutely new ways and we all are looking up by you know things that other brands are doing other influencers are doing, and trying to kind of get some uh, inspiration from what's happening outside and yeah that that's how it's been and it's a continuously we continuously learning and we also know for the next few months we will not be shooting because even if things open up to kind of just go out there everyone would feel a little bit of a discomfort right even to get an asset out to say okay now we're going to get so many people at a place and shoot we don't want to create that so we even when things open up we want to find ways to do uh, shoots which are which which are quick fixes but where the quality is not compromised it's a constant learning curve if you ask me absolutely um what about you uh, harish is that i mean with fashion it's a completely you know a different story in itself uh, have you been trying experimental ways in using influencer marketing with the shoots being stalled and you know no photo shoots no product shoots absolutely nothing so how is mitra kind of managing so first of all uh, thanks for having me uh, pleasure to be here uh, for us it's not a new thing so we do work with influencers quite a lot even if you look at our past uh, where we uh, created our own ip which was mintra fashion superstar that was all about influencers um, we have used influencers in a big way when it comes to our uh, own app store as well so when we do our big uh, sale event which is uh, the end of reason sale Uh, we actually uh, use influencers as uh, imagery on the platform as well so this is not something that we uh, needed to pivot to we always used to a lot of this um recently we also launched uh, this thing called uh, mintra studio which is like a mini destination of fashion content on the app itself so we work with influencers quite a bit um what has changed as uh, we just heard from debo is the, the constraints of uh, shooting and um, of uh, the kind of stories that we could tell and the scale at which we can tell those stories but see um, the way we look at influencers is there's a spectrum of celebrity right you are very well known well paid uh, you know top tier celebs you have your uh, uh, new up and coming influencers and there's the whole spectrum in between um the way we work with them is we make them our voice for fashion expertise or beauty expertise so when it comes to style and lifestyle expertise um the the target audience that we have as mintra which is the young uh, consumer they always tend to listen to somebody who they can relate to who they feel yes this person is like me right so uh, what we have done recently is once uh, we reopened uh, we actually ran a campaign where we shot a campaign in an influencer's house with a couple all right that is doing very well for us um, we have always worked with them on social that has worked tremendously for us so um we treat as an extension of our bau and uh, we might even heavy up on this because it works so well for us uh, we don't see it as a, a special scenario um, this is something that i would recommend to everyone where if the audience will listen to a more relatable person or personality more than they would listen to Uh, you know somebody who's distant this should be a core part of uh, what we do as a strategy that that's how we look at it. thanks 
um, awesome. So uh, uh, Varun and for Mama. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so I I think I I I'm on the same page uh, as Harish. We have uh, a very young brand, and and our journey is about three and a half years old. And when we started, uh, since then, one of the communication insights that the brand is built on. um is millennials trust other millennials right and that's a um that's a proven insight which has been captured in multiple data points as well um and hence since the, the beginning of the brand we have tried to tell our story uh through other um relatable um, real people rather than just limiting um it to brand communication ads so for us actually um this was really business as usual um because uh, we we never really were into large uh, um production assets we were using um repurposed content and uh, content through in which um, uh, other influencers bloggers bloggers were telling our story to consumers and and using them uh, that content and promoting that content to tell the story of the brand so i think that continued for us i think what uh, um what changed during uh, the lockdown uh, it was how do you um, create more uh, relevant contextual content and uh, which will uh, hit home harder during um, these times and when i'm saying contextual i'm saying using um, the 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 context of covid not just talking about covid but the fact that you're locked in you're at home um, and hence how does uh your beauty regime change how does your baby regime change and and creating and driving some of those more relevant conversations when uh, in fact one of the activities which did exceptionally well for us which we did with over 2000 um influencers in the country is is something called a corona heroes which were working outside um like uh, police like uh, you know uh, health workers and sanitation work and we used uh, influencers to actually do that because uh, we um, we we sent out uh, uh, these sanitizers 25 to 50 each to uh, all these 2000 influencers and we requested them to uh just be our goodness ambassadors and start i think uh, those those kind of things is in uh, this relationship is good for us great uh, that's interesting how about you kushbu do you want to share uh, how it has changed for you and what are the interesting things you all have been trying to do during this time hey hi rakshan so i think for us also like you know um devasmita and the harish they be used to uh, work with influencers extensively and um, across different categories of influencers starting from like celebs to micro influencers to nano influencers um just wanted to share like a interesting example of something that we did which was more contextual so one of our brand black dog um it has been advocating you know um taking a pause for um at its brand purpose level uh, but the brand comms which we had was about you know actually going on a holiday being you know going out fishing all of that suddenly in this context became a bit you know not so relevant and uh, but there was a lot of conversation because the world was on a pause everybody was on a lockdown people were talking about what to do in a pause while we wanted to put out a message that it's important to you know stay indoors and be safe uh, but we also wanted to push out a message that you know this is a opportunity to actually do something of the pause that you have been forced into learn a new skill you know do something that you always wanted to do and never had the time to do so what we did was we actually um, got wheel we dust um to do two content pieces for us one was where he um, read uh, shakespeare all shakespeare plays and recap them in 3 minutes and other one was that he said that he's never really done wrote, written a serious song for his band alien chatti so he went at head and wrote a romantic song for wifi because it suddenly became the most important thing in his life so um and the content did really well and we used that for the last couple of months instead of brand comms so i think uh, what influencer like a influencer like we helped us do was actually create contact actual content which was culturally relevant while helping us push the message of staying indoors and being safe So I think that was something interesting with it. Over and above a lot of other stuff that happened for us in the drink space because people were not drinking outside. The bars and pubs were closed. 
Um, so there was a lot of upskilling that we did, possibly something that I could share through the conversation. Some awesome stuff. In fact, I've seen the, the Virda's uh, poem and the song and really, really fun stuff. So, so yeah, um, Nick, do you want to share some, you know, interesting content that you've created possibly for a brand or otherwise, you know, it, you shoot every other week, right? Otherwise, so how has it been going for you? To be very honest, it's every other day now, <laughs> not week, because there's nothing else I can do right now. That's what's changed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what's changed, yeah. In fact, I'm the most productive right now than in the past probably four or five years. <laughs> And firstly, thank you for inviting me. It's, it's a great pleasure to be with all of them. And I remember I used to work for DIGO when I, was, when I used to be a bartender for like four or five years. I bartended for them. And uh, yeah, I mean, influencer marketing is important right now. To be very honest, I use Mama's product. And the, uh, you know, how I know about it is because there's this influencer called uh, FitTuber, who I follow a lot. Like, you know, the best probably fitness I would the channel level. So I used to follow it religiously. And uh, for me, that's what it is. Like, you know, if he said that this is good, then I I feel that it's good. And that's how I can relate it. And that's what I feel is with, you know, with micro influencers or like say big setups. I feel that if you see Shah Rukh Khan driving a Sancho, I know that he's not driving a Sancho for sure. Like, you know, if you see someone like Fituber promoting something like Mama, then I then you know that 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 connects really well rather than seeing Shah Rukh Khan driving a Sancho. And if you talk about content, I feel it's, we have gone back to basics now. And I remember starting probably like six years ago when I started making YouTube videos. I didn't realize how to make videos. I was a bartender, like, I was a bartender for like seven or eight years. So everything that I learned about making content is through watching content. It's through people around me. It's through experimenting stuff. Like, I still remember the first time I landed a tripod from a friend of mine. And I sat on top of a fridge to like, you know, shoot a shot. And that's when I realized that, you know, the friend later came and he opened the legs and I was like, oh, this is open. I thought it's just to keep the camera <laughs> So, and that's how YouTube or that's how content creation is supposed to be. That's what I feel. Right now, everything has become too mainstream. Like, you know, YouTubers are making highly produced videos. Like, you know, in fact, me too. But I feel this is the space that I, that I always wanted to be. And that's how I started making YouTube videos. So because I love making videos. Uh, I'm not a very analytical guy, so I don't watch a lot of content too these days. Like, you know, in the past three, four years, I've not watched any content. So I feel that if you watch content, there are two things that can happen. A, you, if you don't like it, you'll, you'll be thinking like, what is happening in the world? Why is this content doing so well? And B, if you like it, even if you don't want to, your subconscious mind tries to imitate it. I used to watch a lot of TNT, and I used to watch like Life According to Jimmy. And then when I started making content, I started making content which is similar to them. So that's why I don't watch content at all. And everything that I make right now is through surrounding. And I live in Dumbuti. So, and I'll, I've always lived here. So anyways, the access to bigger stars or the creators that I wanted to was not accessible to me because it's like a two hour distance from me to go to Bombay and shoot. So not a lot of, not a lot has changed, but I'm kind of adjusting in the place that I am right now. And I'm in a happy space. I love making what I'm making right now. Exactly. No, it's back to basics, doing the fundamentals, right? And obviously, uh, not a good thing to say, but the views and the, like, you know, everything has been increased right now since everybody has at home. So I'm trying to capitalize on it and like, you know, try to produce as much content as possible from home. Just to add a small point to what Nick said, I think what has happened in the last two months is that Earlier, you have been so focused on the production value and the look and feel of the influencer content. Suddenly, the focus has shifted to storytelling in a big way. Exactly. That's always a good thing. Yeah. So, Harish, how has that worked out? So, if, uh, you know, even we've done some work with Mintra, and we know that Mintra is really particular about the uh, production quality, and rightly so for a fashion brand. So, how has that been um, something you've been able to kind of manage despite difficulties? Are these like FaceTime calls with a telephone call telling them how to do it or? Pretty much all of them. So um, we launched a campaign uh, two days ago. So you might want to see that uh, on YouTube and Insta uh, and Facebook. So what we have, and Nick put it very nicely, right? Storytelling always wins hearts and minds more than anything else. So while we keep the, the, uh, the premium look and the, the uh, visual picture perfection of fashion, we can always tell very human stories um, in this day and age, even while shooting at home. So we picked a couple who 
um, was uh, in near one of the directors who could go and shoot at their home. So we found a way to get a director to their home. <laughs> so, I mean, all, all credit to my team who's been uh, creating magic like this. Um, they went and did Jugad, find a person who could, who was living to a couple who were influencers, then they, they went to their homes and shot. And if you see the creative, it is as impactful as anything they have done before. So, uh, in terms of storytelling, in terms of the looks and look and feel, uh, the kind of uh, um, fashion proficiency that we wanted to show, it's all there. So, as a as a as an industry, we are being uh, pushed to become more creative uh, in the way we tell stories, the way we make our choices on uh, media and also the way we partner with uh, these creators. I prefer the term creators over influencers uh, because it's not just influence, these are creative minds which are telling amazing stories. And uh, it's just making us push our boundaries on how we can make these things happen with the constraints. Constraints always brings out creativity and that's happening in plenty uh, during this time. Jui, do you want to tell us how it's been for you all at uh... You know, pocket aces. I'm sure a lot of your shoots must have been stalled, and a lot of new plans might have, you know, come to. Uh, we can't hear you, Juhi. Oh, okay. I think there seems to be some kind of a audio issue. We could. Uh, all right. I, mean, so, I can talk in behalf, behalf of pocket issues, right? <laughs> sure. If you have any more fun stories to tell us. Uh, no, I mean, like, I'm just saying that for, for me, what I feel is pocket issues. Pocket is that college humor. Pocket issues is college humor of India. If they can put out videos from anywhere, anytime. And the most amount of content on the internet right now. I guess it's of pocket ages. Every time I open up something, there's a new content piece out there and they're doing it brilliant. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I would like to say, would, uh, you know, as Harish said, that uh, I would prefer the term content creator over uh, influencer. In fact, my Instagram bio is like, my mom says I'm a bad influence, so I'm not an influencer. So, uh, I feel a good story always wins. And uh, in fact, even if I, even when I do uh, content marketing, even when I do a video with a brand, there's a thumb rule that I apply every time I try to do. Is that I write a script for a brand. Okay. And then I take out the brand from the script. And then I look at the script and I ask myself, is, is this video is something that I'll put out irrespective as a brand or no? If the answer is yes, I put it out. If the answer is no, I don't. That way what happens is in my entire like five or six years of my life, I've never got a comment saying that you are you know you are a sellout or something. Because it's it's a story, it's fitting well with the brand. Without the brand, it's still funny, like because I make comedy. Without the brand, it's still funny. That means it's a funny piece which is going really well with the brand. And that's that's what has something that has helped me like all this while ongoing content marketing. And I don't think it's important that even brands look at it the same way because you're going to an influencer. If you wanted to do brand content, you put like you get the agency to put a creative and put it on your handle and promote it. The reason you go with your influencer is because you want the influencer's point of view influencer's voice to come into the, your content. So I think what you said, if the brands also look at it the same way, that's when the sweet spot for both the brand and the creator content comes. Exactly. And thankfully, like, you know, I'm right now, after the seven years of the work that I've done, I'm in the position to pick a brand and yeah. tell them that, you know, this is what I feel is right. And this is what I feel would go for both of us. Like, you know, if I'm just, it's not helping you or me, you might as well do like a ad on TV, which will help you. This is not going to help you or me because I'm not doing advertising. I'm just doing content marketing. And uh, I've seen that, you know, in, in fact, a lot of things that I've worked with right now are so, you know, we have a good report that sometimes I make a video for a brand without even a breeze. And I tell them, you know, this is something that I've shot. If you think it's good, I'll put it up. If you think it's not good, I'll just take out the brand, but I'll still put it up. And uh, to be very honest, I've never got a time where they say that, that it's not good. So I've built that repo in the past six years. And I've seen it change right now because I remember the first one or two years, like, you know, in the second year or something when uh, content marketing actually started. It's, you know, I started making YouTube videos when YouTube videos was not a thing like in India. 
So I remember YouTube used to take us to this uh, thing called speed dating, where we used to, I, I, in fact, pocket is were also there at that time. In fact, so what happened, what, what, what used to happen is we used to stick with brand for like, it was like exact speed dating. We used to stick with brand for like 15, 20 minutes each and explain them what is content marketing, what do you think, why you should come in this unconventional way and not do that. So I've seen that phase, phase to this phase now where, in fact, like, you know, everybody is trying to get into it. Awesome. So, um, you know, kind of moving on to... Uh, Lakshmi, can you hear me now? I just wait. want to check if you can hear me now. I can hear, can hear. Do you want okay. to... Okay, cool. Yeah. May, may I? Sure, sure. If you're not spending too much time, I'll just take a couple of minutes. Thanks, Nick, for stepping in when my network was so crap. Um, so, yeah, just a couple of things first about the talent uh, um, in particular. So, we've seen in this, the lockdown phase that, uh, you know, the demand for uh, influencer content has gone up many fold. Um, we've uh, been able to cater to it um, quite well and we're really enjoying making some of the content. A lot of it is about... Uh, you know, the lockdown, the campaigns are about the lockdown. Uh, but similarly, there are some that want us to stay completely away from the lockdown content um, completely. Uh, on the Pocket Aces front in general, uh, we've continued to make uh, content on Filter Copy has been making videos every uh, a couple of new fresh videos every week. These are without anybody meeting up. So we've set up a new system with the, you know, the crew size may be same, but we've identified creators who can make this, shoot this on their own and be able to put it out uh, for us while the editing, etc., is done by, um, by, by Pocket Aces itself. But we've really relied on creators to help us shoot what we're putting out. On, um, on Dice, we've created a series in lockdown with Bumble and Cadbury. Uh, it just went out. It's a 24-part series on Instagram. Uh, so that, that released um, from, I think it was the third week that we were into lockdown that we started releasing one episode every week. Um, yeah, so so we've not stopped innovating. We're creating new stuff all the time. None of that has stopped, and hopefully, we'll keep coming up with newer methods and entertaining everybody who's watching us. We just did a food and drink call on Gobble with you guys. So we just got yes, yes, right. So, you know, kind of leading on to the next question in the same uh, breath, right? So, are we all, I mean, is a lot of brands still doing a lot of lockdown communication? Or uh, We've noticed, like, you know, starting in April, uh, in March, April, a lot of the conversation was about uh, hygiene, hand wash, hand wash challenge yourself. So, or, you know, work from home, board at home, make up look from home, and so on and so forth. So, has that kind of changed now? Are we, is the products... Uh, beginning, I mean, as the messaging is starting to become a product driven, brand driven. So, how I, has it been now? You know, how is there a transition at all right now? Yeah, uh, for us, I'd say that you know, the lockdown, the couple of aspects of the brand and what the situation kind of like the reality that kind of came out was uh, state those connection between the two. For example, workout from home became one of the very things that people started doing and as a sports brand, I mean, we knew we could have a voice there. And the other thing was about from home, you know, Zoom parties. That was this other conversation that was going on. And again, as a sports brand, which has a very strong style element, we had a play there too. So for us, it wasn't, yes, I mean, hygiene conversations sort of started coming in when the business resumed to say that what are the measures we're taking at the store or be it in the online platform, what the entire supply chain doing to make that happen. But that's more like an informative, but if you really talk about the content and the storytelling, we're really trying to relate to what a consumer is feeling and the lifestyle that he or she is having to lead doing this. And where does a brand like Puma fit in that universe? 
you know that's where we sort of try to communicate for example work out from home while initially we would as a footwear first uh, brand we would we started talking more about our apparel because so people wanted to wear you know, something interesting at home and work out comfortable stuff similarly lounge wear something that they want to wear if they're doing a, a work from home call video call or a catch up with their friends you know how could you style these are the kind of conversation we could have as a brand we could very seamless be a part of and that's where we that's the conversation we we continue to create and yeah that's that's how we leading within this situation. i'm staying away from a direct conversation on hygiene and things. that's more an informative that we would do once what we would do uh why don't so you know since uh, there was a conversation about mama earth and you know a lot of these uh, our audience are also talking about how they like your brand and they know these influencers so do you think um, the covid situation a lot of people i suppose realize that girl people so to say work have a special connect with the audience so do you think a lot of brands and you guys as well will start looking at more physical associations or long term associations and creators ke sath associations more than brand endorsements a large set of endorsements per se i think for us uh, um, any which way is we were uh, whoever uh, creators whichever creators we were working with we were actually working with them on on very continuous and and long term basis we hadn't like structured it into um uh, contract we work with um there are there are at least uh, if if we talk about for example youtube there are more than 50 creators who we have been working with over the last 18 months plus um, um uh, with 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 the continuity of probably every month right on instagram there are month on month for more than two years now right because for us uh, this is uh, this is ambassadorship this is a partnership this is not a campaign which comes and goes then out and uh this is this is uh, the media that we believe you know exists for us right? um are the best place to tell our stories because they are nowadays um creators like uh, nikus and uh, they will not just go with any brand which is just paying the money uh, they will evaluate they will look at what the ethos are and hence sort of associate and, uh, so for us these any which ways have been uh, um, longer form associations and uh, we are actually now um getting uh, brands that wanted to come into this space then uh, so we would we would we are we are structuring these into actually more longer term 6 month 12 month uh, uh, associations as well now with with our uh, top creators so, um and i think the entire space uh, is a lot of brands are um, every quarter realizing the importance of this space and 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 joining the wagon but the good thing is there are a lot of new creators are also you know coming up when um at at some level india's uh, creation space is still um a way more uh, uh, you know um, it's it's still not as niche in terms of content spaces um, as you would find um you know china or a us when so i think as more brands also keep coming in um, the number of creators and the number of spaces that they specifically specialize in is also going to be in keep increasing so there will be supply as well as media and uh, will will continue to grow extensively nice uh, harish what about you so you i think mintra has always had a fair i'd say a good mix of celeb endorsements plus uh, influencer kind of partnerships so do you see the percentage kind of increasing or tilting more towards the um, you know digital endorsements slash longer term associations with influencers you know going forward 
see lakshmi i think the the, the both are important um, one is important for mass awareness and reach and the other is important for storytelling and um, influencing at scale right so we don't see either of them being less important in the coming years especially after we uh, come back with our uh, plans post uh, covid and now that we have reopened so both will continue to be important uh, the way i would say uh, I, i wouldn't talk in terms of percentages or proportions i would talk in terms of strategies so our uh, content marketing and um, uh, fashion advice let me call it that right fashion um, and beauty advice and also um, expertise is more driven by influencers so whether you take the three things that i spoke about earlier right mintra fashion superstar season 2 um, again it will be about influencers and how fashion ecosystem can benefit from growing this uh, eco- this uh, part of the uh, influencer ecosystem second will be mintra studio which will continue to grow in a big way um we have just started it's it's a a few weeks uh, to a month old uh, we are very very excited about how big this can become in the future uh, third for our sale and also for our brand communications how influencers become a bigger and bigger part of this um and for different use cases right uh, a family uh, use case is different from a, a trendy young girl in a metro use case which is different from a tier 2 boy uh, who's very different from an office going professional in a metro so and 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 different from parents for example so for these different use cases we are very actively exploring how we can talk to these consumers through uh, creators who are more aligned to those um, uh, types of uh, personas we have so we we definitely see it playing a more important strategic role as we have always been very close to this um the numbers will depend on what gives us better roi what gives us more a bang for the buck in the long term so that's how i would look at it um since you mentioned uh, roi so with a lot of uh, sales the economy having its problems sales going down you know a lot of these uh, stances like one quarter is almost lost for a lot of people right so will the focus now start being more on influencer marketing is typically always been about uh, brand awareness branded content more you know in in that space so will the general conversation start you know moving more towards uh, performance marketing or trying to drive sales uh, you think there'll be a shift like that that it could possibly you know happen uh in the short term yes um given all the uh, the the unprecedented situation that we are all in uh but in the long term i think brand building is as important to us as it is for every single brand in the country um i i would separate your question into two parts right one is roi important is performance marketing more important roi has always been important right and second part of the question is how does influencer marketing fit into that so we take a very um, roi driven approach even to perform, even to influencer marketing so it's not that we see branded content as a different um, pie which is uh, not set to the same stringent uh, requirements of all the other channels that we have we see it as one more channel and we see uh, the the mix of channels as a spectrum of roi uh, numbers and this is also one of the channels that will contribute to roi in a big way now roi can we can we calculate it purely based on the sale or it can be a upper part of the funnel which eventually eventually converts to a sale uh, but either way it has to contribute in a significant way to roi and that's how we look at it interesting um, what about you kushbu so do you have a you know point of view on whether influencer marketing has been more uh, performance driven or has it been more for brand building for you or and and do you see that likely to change in the coming months so we are a category which does not sell online so uh, when you say performance marketing the traditional way of performance marketing would happen i wish, I wish right now it was yeah <laughs> i wish right now it was cuz we see it's still not online sales yeah not something you can track yeah. so it's still not available on amazon and flipkart so um 
I think so for us, when we look at performance, I think it's a slightly different KPI to what everybody else would uh, see it. I think um, the, the key reason that uh, we engage with influencers would be um, to drive fame. And when, like Harish said, when it comes to a certain set of brands, it would be for fame plus mass appeal, whereas a certain set of brands, it would be fame plus storytelling. Um, I think uh, what personally I feel is uh, the most important KPI that I look at is, is the engagement score. So, um, if I create a piece of content on the brand handle versus that something that I've co-created with an influencer and is resting on the influencer's handle, there should be a significant data as far as the engagement is concerned on the influencer's handle for the content to have really, to me, be considered as something which has given me a ROI worth the investment. I think it's, uh, because of the category, it's a slightly different uh, response to what everybody else would give. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, in fact, we uh, honestly kind of believe that there's a lot more that, you know, can be done with influencer marketing itself. So a lot of times influencer content, like, you know, content, creators content get, uh, especially for a category like fashion and all of that, these how to's and reviews, most of the time are created, they stay on their channel, they have a certain, they stay there forever, but they're viewed for a certain period of time and they kind of lose their significance. Whereas, you know, reviews and how to's and tutorials are actually valid for life. So long as the product exists, those videos will have value. So, you know, in now COVID's kind of pushing a lot of people to use these in multiple ways. And we've also kind of uh, built a tool that will kind of bring all these to the home page and the product page and kind of increase shelf life, increase conversions and things like that. What's going to be important going forward is going to be how you convert your influencers and creators into your brand advocates. I think and a lot of that journey is not necessarily a journey of how much you're paying and whether you're getting into endorsement contracts with them or not. But it's going to be a combination of that plus how you are really engaging with them, kind of experiences that you are offering to them, um, the kind of conversations you as a brand are having with them. I think it's going to be a mix of that. I mean, and I think getting an influencer to an advocate is what also I would, I mean, I'm just saying that, but it's a great term, KPI to, you know, evaluate your relationship by. Yeah, absolutely. Julie, have you, um, you know, Pocket Aces done some kind of a, you know, any interesting kind of a deal where maybe it's like the performance have, like, how is it, uh, is there any interesting ways in which you all have structured your partnership with brands? Just hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So, I mean, I think that uh, the series on Instagram would be a great example for this. Um, it was done with uh, Bumble and Cadbury. Um, it is 24 episodes of one minute, uh, you know, content on Instagram. And uh, for every four episodes are stitched together for YouTube. Uh, they've been, uh, their production quality is great uh, it doesn't look like it is a two people uh, uh, on set kind of job of course there's a large team working uh, behind the scenes you know and uh, putting a lot of the uh, technical requirements together um, but uh, I mean I, I think that quality etc has not been compromised on that yet keeping in mind that nobody met to do that we identified actors that uh, you know, could pull this off together. One of the actors directed this, uh, uh, the, the whole series, um, and they were given very strong tech specs to uh, kind of follow to make it. Uh, very similarly, even influencer uh, content or uh, things made by creators right now, is it's easy to do for a brand because the quality hasn't changed pre or post, right? We're still reaching out uh, with the same, like you're engaging with your audience, you're, it's a smaller ticket size. So all those kept in mind, uh, we're creating uh, campaigns. And I do think that um, influencer marketing is kind of, there's going to be a blur between um, you know, like a TVC uh, production and influencer, what an influencer can create. 
I think that Godridge, uh, the Godridge campaign with Karan Johar is a good example of this. It's something that typically would have been done as a TV series. Um, but in this time, they've explored it and done it as a, uh, as a campaign on uh, Karan Johar's page. Also, we've seen that, uh, you know, um, atypical brands that weren't advertising so much uh, with, uh, with influencers are doing it a lot more now. So something like uh, a good example would be SBI. Um, they, they've, they've created a ca many campaigns uh, with us. Um, this one was created pre, like a bunch of people met to make it. So it was done pre-lockdown. Um, but it was a really interesting one on uh, spreading a message on, uh, you know, breast cancer. So they've created, SBI created this little dot card um, uh, with how you can, you know, self-examine um, for, for breast cancer. So that was a really interesting campaign that we did recently with them. Um, I think currently everybody's in this phase where they're trying to innovate and come up with the best that they can to keep their audiences engaged. And uh, we're, we're doing exactly the same. Yeah, like you uh, rightly said, you know, the lines are blurred between, uh, as Nick also mentioned that there are no content creators, right? So it's not really so much influencer as, as much as content creators. You know? so yeah. The marketing is slowly a form of content marketing, I mean, creating brand content. We need, uh, also, like, I think that um, being able to function efficiently yet remotely is going to be the new normal. Uh, so uh, I think that everyone is going to have to figure out that and advertising is a large part of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the marketing, marketing spends in digital, a large part of it is, um, will have to be like refigured, I guess. Yeah, so, um, you know, the probably the last thing probably uh, cover is, uh, so, do, what is the general feel? Is it something that is going to kind of disappear? Influencer marketing is like the, the biggest conversation. Like everyone said, it's the most sought after kind of marketing technique that's been used right now. And it's been working out. Everybody has been pushing the envelope, trying out new things. We're doing a lot of things that we you know, never knew was possible with a bunch of uh, people at home and you know, all kinds of uh, various. Do you think it's just a temporary kind of a thing until things become normal and it goes back to, you don't know when the normal is going to resume, but yeah, so uh, when it does in a couple of months, hopefully, you think the kind of uh, this, this trend might not sustain, might not continue, or do you think it's something that everyone's learned in this journey and, you know, we'll probably try exploring a little more of this along the way as we go. Varun, what's your, uh, what's your so I think for, for um, I very strongly believe that even pre-COVID, uh, there was a strong trend towards um, uh, influencer marketing or content marketing, um, uh, as you choose to call it. And, um, and uh, I strongly believe this has just been um, a period where a lot of people who did not believe in it or were not experimenting with it have ended up doing that. And, and uh, whoever has done that um, um, will will likely to be more likely to be continuing um, this uh, even post that because um, it's it's really a, it's it's a consumer um, insight. I mean, the the generation that we are talking to um, believes in listening to stories uh, from people rather than um, you know stories from um, uh, branded production um, uh, you know sixty seconders. So I think. Um, hence, uh, uh, I believe that that it'll it is just accelerated uh, the pace of adoption um, on influencer marketing. Uh, what, what do you what do you think uh, Mintra is going to kind of continue after uh, you know the whole COVID situation kind of? Hey, uh, I, I would agree with what uh, Varun was saying, and I'll I'll give you a different perspective on this. Right, uh, if you go back to first principles, there are two things that have changed. Um, actually, one that has not changed and one that has changed dramatically. So the principle that has not changed is if you take a pyramid of uh, message believability, right? At the top being mass media brand telling you something, 
bottom being your friend telling you something you would always tend to believe what your friend tells you influencers are somewhere close to that right they are trusted advisors in certain areas especially when it comes to lifestyle that we play so there is more believability at this end of the funnel so there is no reason why we wouldn't do more of this as a brand we are very authentic and very empathetic so our consumers actually believe us when we say something also because we are very careful and very choiceful about what we say but using the content creator or influencer voice to amplify what we say will definitely continue to happen the second thing from a first principle point of view what has changed is um the the explosion of uh, uh, social media especially in the last couple of years uh, looking at the way youtube insta tiktok all, all have uh, grown in this country um becoming a content creator has become that much more easy so from a generation probably 20 years ago where there were uh, 10 well known names in the country now there are 10000 well known names in the country right so um when content creators have become more and more popular uh when the audience is watching them automatically brands like us will follow so this is not a trend or a fad this is a this is a shift in the way uh content creation has become more uh, democratic and the same way storytelling will become demo- more democratic and brands like ourselves which pride in a, in great storytelling will follow greatly uh, put you know about how the whole system and the whole content uh, storytelling has been evolving and changing and i think covid kind of accelerated the process and forced everybody to kind of think think along those lines in the last couple of months kushbu what's your uh, you know kind of thought on this i agree with what bardon and harish say it um, just one little point i think what is on the brand side we shared a perspective but what has happened on the influencer and like there were like food bloggers who used to talk about places to go and eat they are not talking about that there used to be fashion bloggers who is like you know outfit of the day they are not talking about that so in the not of just on the brand side but on the influencer end also they have been on the last two months have been a bit of a unlearn learn journey for influencers where they because of the challenges they have had to reinvent their content narrative you know how they want to you know grow and i think somewhere in this there is a opportunity for brands to work better with influencers in a very authentic way because uh, things are changing and honestly i don't think we are going to come back to normal in two months it might be slightly longer than that just so it's, <laughs> you know it's about adapting learning both ways so i i mean i'm amazed at how interesting some of the influencer content has become compared to earlier people just posting great looking pictures so i think it's going to be very interesting going forward absolutely so uh, what about you devasmita so are you going to actually cancel that shoot you had planned and make it a shorter <laughs> home uh, well no i think i agree with everyone who just spoke varun harish because for us collaborations working with content creators influencers was very much part of our overall marketing strategy what has changed though is how we engage with them how far we stretch it what is the balance between a big uh, big budget shoot and the smaller pieces how do we tell the story storytelling has been very much a part of how we as a brand have evolved and we will continue to do so and the content creators and our influencer advocates have been a very 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 strong pillar to make that happen it just we constantly evolving in the more what are the newer ways to do it what are the most fresh take on a certain story and how better can we tell it and in a, in within the constraints that have been which has been more environmental but the whole uh aspect of storytelling still is critical the aspect of having the influencers be the voice of your brand and say it in the way which is relatable to your consumer still exists so all of that exists it's just finding out newer ways and i think it this situation like people say right like uh, necessity is the mother of all inventions i think this is the time we'll see some of the most exciting marketing events sort of coming out in the way people do marketing So yeah, I think this is here to stay, and newer learnings to come out of this. So Nick, why don't you uh, share some, you know, your thoughts on this, and we could wrap that up with uh, your closing lines on 
I mean, like, I would like to say what uh, I would uh, agree with what Harish said here. Like, you know, the top being your uh, the top panel being your uh, actors and stuff, and the bottom is your friend telling you. In fact, I would say, like, you know, as I said, I'm not an influencer. I'm a storyteller. The biggest influencer for me is a guy in the store, I guess, because I still remember the, you know, my first uh, most expensive shoot that I bought when I just started earning was Puma by Puma by the way. And uh, when I went to buy it. There was a girl who told me, you know, I was just checking it out, and I was like, just checking it, and I was like, it's so decent. She's like, नहीं यहाँ पे नहीं वहाँ पे देखो अच्छा दिखेगा. I'm like, what the different mirror ही है ना? तो नहीं यहाँ पे नहीं वहाँ पे देखो. I I don't know why, but when I saw in that mirror, I loved it and I bought it. I don't know what she did. I don't know what there in that mirror, but that's what I feel like. <laughs> These are the people who are influencers. And uh, apart from that, I feel storytelling would still be the same. You are at your home. The best you can do is like you know collaborate with a lot of people. Collaboration is the way to go about it. I still remember the video that we did for a brand, and you know there was this app that we promoted, and the app was trending on iOS for number one like for the next one. So I don't think any amount of money or any amount of um, you know any amount of money can give you that source or like you know even if you get that, it will require like an immense amount of money to put in. People would still believe people that they hear every day. You know, best being the blogger. You know, I would I would have uh, probably have a lesser reach than someone who blogs every day because he's giving his life out. He's telling people what he's been through. People believe him in more than rather than you know me being a content creator and uh, putting my life out on Instagram. I'm you know I make comedy videos, but that's how it is. I guess uh, it's not going to change. It has it has been in an in endless incre- increasing uh, you know, format in the past five six years, and I I don't see it going down any. Any times to me. In fact, if you see right now in the in the curve of people uh, make, making content, you would have your actors getting like millions of followers, probably say like you know twenty thirty million followers, and like an influencer with like a content creator with probably like a million followers is much more. Uh, you know, you can see it number wise too. If you can check the comments on the content creator who got a million follower, or like the amount of likes or the amount of shares that he gets to. Someone who's a Bollywood creator who's probably got like 15, 20 million followers, you would always see more engaging is the one who's like creating content constantly. Yep, absolutely. So I think we've kind of uh, done our time here. Uh, thanks everyone. It was a great conversation. Some really awesome insights. I'm glad to glad that we could discuss on all all that we did. So thank you, uh, Lakshmi, for moderating the session, and thank you to all our panelists. Thank you for being here and discussing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see a lot of people in the chats have enjoyed the conversation. Uh, we will continue this conversation offline as well. If you have any questions, you can uh, tweet to us using our hashtag E4M Webinar and E4M Content Jam. our speakers are also will be around for you to just tag them maybe ask them a personal question nick i'm sure you're going to get a lot of questions about content creation from now on uh, but uh, because a lot of people are also asking where vernacular influencers is that going to be the next uh, big trend so yes i would request everybody to join us in this conversation on twitter while we move on to our next panel once again thank you very much to all our speakers thank and you. panelists here thank you very much thank you